right, so let's get going. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the webinar. Uh, right? I mean, I don't know how much time you're spending online these days, but probably a lot more than you used to. And I'm so happy to be with here, you, here with all of you tonight, especially as we continue to experience this space and time and season that we're in together. As we continue to speak about the topic of resilience that comes up a lot more now, and many of us are likely calling in from home, dealing with multiple goals around well-being. Whether it be for yourself or a family member, maybe where you were before or to where you were now has taken a new turn. So wellness is a really important subject as we navigate these times, and perhaps even wellness has become first and foremost on our minds. And this could include physical, mental, social, lifestyle, and spiritual well-being. So the volume may be a little more turned up right now as you know, we're noticing the gaps, right? We may be able to see more things that we didn't see before in terms of our health, or maybe some of our goals have shifted. And for each of us, we'll all have unique and special individual goals that might need some attention. So I wanted to quickly introduce myself. My name is Angela Eiseldyke. I'm a certified nutritional practitioner for 20 years. I'm also the National Director of Education and Training for Jameson Wellness Specialty Division, or Body Plus, with a ton of experience working with teams, projects, and people at various levels on their health and wellness journey. My mission is around helping people become healthy and well, and to empower people to have an extraordinary healthy life including that of my own and my family. Uh, so a little admin to start with, if you do have questions along the way, we've got a Q&A section. You can type your question in. We've got some amazing panelists on, other nutritionists, Diala, as well as Alana, to answer any of your questions. And if we don't get to them during the webinar, I'm gonna get to them at the end. And after that, if we still don't get to them, we have a great email address. You can email your questions in as well. We wanna make sure that everyone's looked after today and that you have a great experience on this webinar. So for today, uh, I wanted to talk more, mostly about resilience around core four foundations. So resilient health does start with, um, with, with the core foundations. So that, that includes a number of things. Just a second. I'm just getting a little bit off my, my game here. Just a second here. So I'm going to start out by asking some of you some questions, but if we just start out by talking about resilient health. Resilient health starts with a solid foundation. So if you think about your body as your home with multiple systems and rooms interconnected to make it function without a solid foundation, the home won't last very long. All it would take is one storm to knock it over. So the same applies for our body, right? If you want to live uh, in a healthy body or have a healthy body, you need to start with a solid foundation. So that's where it all starts. And there's pillars of health that we're going to talk about today. So the lifestyle, food, and nutrient, the thoughts, the actions that we all make every single day matter right? So we can remain strong no matter what life throws our way. So when we're faced with various stressors, natural disaster, health concerns, relationship, work or social, school problems, whatever it may be, resilience is how well a person or yourself can adapt or bounce back and thrive no matter what the external circumstances might be. And so something that we should all start to really pay attention to, uh, especially now as we navigate these times, there are ways we can make it easy to fuel our body with simple choices that we can make every day, inch by inch. So what type of actions can we actually take? So I'm going to start out by asking some pretty bold questions, right? Because all of us have these things that we do. So it just gives us a level of awareness of where we are right now, just to get a little slap, snapshot, you know, for yourself, right? To get warmed up, just checking out with some of our coping mechanisms. So what are they? So with stress and uncertainty comes certain behaviors and habits that give us comfort, right? It's human nature. We are human after all. And for some of us, it's food. So a lot of times during you know, times of stress, we may choose food uh, for more than just nutritional reasons to give us comfort, right? We all have them, right? So what are yours? What are some of your go-tos? Maybe just take a little list. You know, mine are dark chocolate and chips. Those are my crunchy, salty, and you know, sweet dark chocolate kind of thing. Those are my comfort foods, right? And so comfort foods are okay, but the excess, that's where we start to get a little bit imbalanced. So we are what we eat, we also are what we absorb. So if we just think about that and we think about what are some of the things we're putting into our body, and then how do we feel after eating them? You know, even a few days later, make a note of them. Maybe put pen to paper just to get some awareness going, you know, as we kind of go through this, you know, what are mine, right? And awareness is a really great place to start. And if you're still looking for a little more, you know, check out, you know, things like what is in your grocery cart? 
right? What is in your cupboard right now? You know, what are some of the things, right? What are you buying a lot of? What are the patterns? You know, and recent consumer data is showing that the center of the store shopping, you know, whether or not you're going into the store, but typically the center of the store are the canned goods and the processed foods are outpacing the perimeter of the store by a long shot. So while we may be, you know, through the original trigger stage of this new world pandemic, where stockpiling might have been higher, we aren't through it yet. And I still, I think that we're still exuding some of these habits. And so what's in the center of the store, right? That's where we have the processed goods and the perimeter of the store, the outside of the store, that's where we're going to find, you know, the fresh fruits and vegetables, the fresh cut meats, you know, things like that. So with fewer store visits, we might be planning ahead. So we might be looking for products with a longer shelf life. And so data, we're looking at some of the data and we're finding that the sales of canned goods, frozen pizza, potatoes, prepared processed foods, snacks, desserts, and confectionery foods, you know, like the grab and go and meat pies have all increased in sales. So just, just getting some awareness around what might be in your cart is a good place to start as well. And so how many fresh fruits and vegetables are you consuming daily? And are there a variety of colors? So again, more awareness, right? When we're supposed to be getting, you know, six to 12 servings of fruits and vegetables per day, we're still not getting that, right? Most people are not even getting a third of that. So if you just take another look at your grocery cart and just get an idea of how many of these that you're buying, are they the same? Is there a, is there a rainbow there? Or do you tend to buy the same fruits and vegetables all the time? Are you, are you venturing out into new, new areas, new colors? Um, so recent consumer data shows us that the sales of fresh produce have slowed and even declined over the last couple of months due to consumer concern over shelf life. So these products are located in the perimeter of the store. And so again, like we mentioned, the frozen foods have increased and it might even be frozen vegetables. I even find at my local grocery store, I can't get my frozen vegetables. They're kind of, you know, emptying on those shelves. So are there only a few things that you're buying here, right? So just, just take a look in terms of that. And that will also give you some insight and lead into some of the pillars that we're going to talk about. Another question. So lots of questions here, right? Because it's about you. It's about you. It's about your family. You're coming here for yourself. You're coming here for your family, probably. So you're trying to get ways of getting healthier and look at foundations and simple things you can do. So how much cold water fish are you, daily, are you eating on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, right? So typically people are not eating fish on a daily basis. And so increase of foods like sausages, and hamburgers, you know, are you remembering, you know, the fresh and frozen fish, you know, and not the breaded kind, right? So we tend not to consume enough of this fresh uh, uh, cold water fish, right? And so, and then family members too, right? I know my family members don't necessarily love fish, especially the young ones, the kids. So, right, we may not be getting a lot of this. And there's a reason why I'm asking this, because in a little while, I'm going to be talking about some nutrients that are really, really important for us and all, every single one of our cells that are found in cold water fish. All right, so how healthy is your gut? You know, and health does start in your gut. We may have heard this before or we may not have. And we, we may not quite understand why that is, but good health, good foundational health starts in our gut. And this is not a trend. You know, the topic is so important. We need to pay attention here. So digestive health is a big piece of our foundational health and can actually be impacted by our choices. So we definitely have to pay attention to our gut. So if we look at, you know, just this gut health check that we have here, right? So this is a lot of really great questions that give you some awareness on what, how your gut might be functioning or what may be causing an imbalance, you know, in your good bacteria, you know, asking yourself, you know, are you, do you have gas, burping, bloating, constipation, diarrhea, right? That's a really good indicator of gut issues. Have you taken antibiotics in the past year? Do you frequently take antacids or pain medication? This could inter impact your microbiome. Do you frequently consume fermented or probiotic rich foods, right? Yes or no. So these are all really great questions to give you an idea of how well you're doing. So this might be a good one to take a screenshot of uh, to give you an idea of, of where you are and then you can add up all of your totals there as well. Uh, do you frequently feel stressed? Do you consume processed foods? Are you consuming municipal water? And I'm going to get into why all this is important um, as we move through some of the pillars, the foundationals uh, for the core four. Uh, do you currently suffer from diarrhea or constipation? 
are you prone to colds? So we definitely have to pay attention here, right? And you're not just what you eat, you are what you absorb. So this bowel function is really important to understand, right? We could be taking things, but if we don't have good bowel function, we may not be getting the most of it. And it goes beyond, you know, gas, burping, bloating, constipation, and that as well. Uh, there's other factors that go on in our gut that we're going to learn about too as we move through. So take an inventory, take a snapshot. You know, this is what building self-awareness is all about. It's about building up that wellness knowledge as well. So what are most Canadians not getting enough of? Well, we're going to touch on this and it may be more personal for you, right? And still shockingly, it's actually fresh variety of vegetables and fruits, vitamin D, DHA and EPA. And we're going to continue to talk about this throughout the presentation and why they're so important. It will become more apparent and then you'll have ideas based on your own circumstances. So sit with some of these questions for a little while as we move through uh, this presentation. So we've discussed that health starts with a healthy foundation. I wanna plant another seed. This begins with the understanding of where you are. And this is a little bit about mindset. So this is a little bit about really just stopping and understanding what is actually going on. So this is where you wanna get yourself educated and, and knowing what is happening here. And it also gives you a little bit of the why. So it's a, lo it's a lot about pausing and we have a, maybe a little more time now to actually pause and think about what our priorities are. Maybe your health wasn't on the front burner uh, and, and it is now. It was on the back burner. It wasn't a priority, right? So this is where we can get really inspired and just by stopping, just by pausing. And then we can challenge. We can challenge that and just say, okay, are there things we can do? Are there some things that I can do that I can take ownership with, with for improvement? You know, how can I? How can I get that goal? That How can I achieve that goal? How can I feel better? How can I sleep better? How can I have more energy? How can I show up and run up the stairs for my kids or keep up with my kids as they're out there biking or whatever it may be, right? So there's lots of different goals that we may each and individually have. And now you can start asking, how can I do this, right? Because it comes back to you and how you feel every day and how you show up every day. And a lot of it has to do with the choices that you make and what you put into your body. And then taking action, right? So this is where you decide to change or you choose again. You know, you may have been making choices in the past that maybe you don't make you feel good or aren't leading you on that path of health and wellness that you want to be on. You can always choose again. You can always start today. Always, always, always. And it's about balance. So this is a critical component here. Otherwise, this is just information, right? So listening to this presentation is good, but you know, if you go back to your old habits, then nothing has really changed. So committing to some sort of action, whether it be tiny, small, just an inch, will make a huge difference. You know, behavior is crucial in all of that. And from there, we'll have a better understanding of what it takes to be healthy, right? So if you think about the table that's missing a leg, it's not going to stand up very well. So there's typically four legs on a table that keep it up. So we want to make sure that each of our legs is standing strong and resilient so that we can stand strong and resilient and we can withstand whatever life throws at us. So there's an impact that making these choices can have on our body. So yes, nutrients do affect all different areas of our body. You know, we've discussed that already. Um, and if we look at, you know, yourself, and where you are, every single system in our body requires optimal nutrients to aid all systems functioning. So we are what we absorb. However, we have many external factors that we also have to deal with on top of our diet, right? So there's environment, there's internal stressors, external stressors, chemicals and foods that we're eating, and you know, all kinds of different things that we have to deal with, you know, that some of them are even outside of our control. So what's most important is that we optimize each and every one of these systems. And it starts at a cellular level. It starts with nutrients. It starts with tiny, tiny atoms. And so what we put into our body really does matter. And so we've talked about this with our education team, you know, when we feel good, we do good. So this is a really important piece. And so this is one place to start as well. And if you remember this, this is a good visual to help you remember and even ask yourself as you move through that stop phase, that stop, challenge and choose phase. You know, where am I sitting right now? I love the book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by the late Stephen Covey. Um, the first habit is be proactive, right? And so that's really, really interesting because, you know, as we navigate these times here and we look at being proactive, what does that actually mean? It means taking action. But what if we feel helpless? What if we feel like we don't have control? Well, we actually do. We have more control than we think. 
and there's less control out there than we may realize as well. We, we're always sitting in a level of uncertainty. We just don't realize it. Right now, it's just we're, the flashlight is on that right now, right? So we may have a really high level of concern where we're concerned about a lot of things that are going on outside of our control. And then we may feel that we don't have control. But if we actually sit in our circle of influence, we can ask ourselves, how can I? What can I do to change this? Are there some things that I can do you know, to get through these next months, weeks, whatever it may be, and come out on the other side stronger. And yes, you can. You absolutely can because you can make choices. So there's choices that you can make around, you know, your lifestyle choices, right? So your, your diet and lifestyle choices, movement, right? That's another piece as well, digestion and mindset. So when it comes to your diet, you know, what are your patterns? What are your go-to, you know, for eating, sleeping, stress responses, alcohol, smoking, coffee, and more? What are the things that you're doing that you could possibly think about shifting, right? And what are your fitness levels right now? What are you doing to stay moving? You know, it may be a little harder to keep moving, you know, as we navigate these times, right? Not able to go to the gym. Okay, so what? Let's make our own gym. Let's do online workouts. Let's go for walks. Let's do some other things that we maybe haven't been doing before, right? Sitting is really the new smoking. And so we can influence our digestion. Can we? We absolutely can. Digestion is key, you know, by chewing our food, by slowing down. You know, there's certain supplements and nutrients we can take as well, but there's certain foods that can absolutely help to heal our gut as well. And so understanding, you know, what these factors are can really influence our digestion. And then of course, mindset is a huge factor that we constantly need to monitor, right? How we perceive things can affect our stress levels. Emotional stress is huge, right? So how we're feeling is influenced by what we're thinking. And, you know, it's, it's just really important to get your thoughts and what you think about your thoughts in order so that you can live the life that you set out to and catch yourself along the way. So again, it comes back to that stop you know, being aware, challenge, taking ownership, and then choosing. And you can always choose again when you catch yourself in a loop or some thoughts or feelings that aren't making you feel very good. So we can make these realistic and simplistic. It does not have to be perfect. You know, just taking a small action is better than nothing. And that's what starts the habit. So let's understand the immune system's role. So the immune system protects the body against disease or other potentially damaging foreign bodies. So when functioning properly, the immune system identifies and attacks a variety of threats, including viruses, bacteria, and parasites, while distinguishing them from the body's own healthy tissue. So the immune system has a vital role. It protects your body from harmful substances, germs, and cell changes that could make you ill. It's made up of various organs, cells, and proteins. And there are many areas in our body Body that are constantly monitoring and protecting our immune system, striving for balance. You know, as long as your immune system is running smoothly, you don't notice that it's there, right? It's there. We have an innate immune system that naturally wants to defend us and fight for our rights. And, you know, so if, as long as we're giving it the right things, the sleeping, the eating, the diet, the lifestyle, the movement, all these things and mindset, you know, our immune system will be functioning well, you know, but if it stops working properly because it's weak or can't fight particularly aggressive germs, then you're going to get ill. And germs that your body has never encountered before are also likely to make you ill, right? So some germs will only make you ill the first time you come into contact with them, you know, and then other times that they're going to give you more immunity, right? So th these are some of the things to think about when it comes to our immune system. But remember, it's connected to every, just like every cell in our body is connected, our immune system is as well. So what are some of the things that compromise the immune system? You know, we talked about some of these already, right? So if we look at, you know, some of the areas, you know, lifestyle factors. So stress, absolutely. It's not just the stress itself. It's our perception of the situation. You know, we can't control what happens to us, but we can control our response. That's really, really important. Sleep. Sleep is so crucial. I did an earlier webinar today as well, talking about sleep and how important it is for our recovery and for our resilience and how we show up the next day, mentally, physically, all of that. We need seven to nine hours per night. It's so important. It should not be put on a low priority. It's, it's something that should be protected, right? Not enough exercise. We absolutely need to move our body and move our system so that we can fight off any invaders. Um, eating or drinking too much, you know, sugar, for example, curbs our immune system cells. So I know this, you know, as, as an example with my children, when they're eating, a lot, if they eat a lot of sugar, there's been a lot of holidays, they're typically a couple days later, they get a runny nose. And I just know it to be true, right? So this effect of eating sugar can last a few hours after downing a couple of sugary drinks. So if you have kids, you can also attest to this too, right? 
Then pr uh, protein and trans fats, you know, too much of this or too little protein and too much trans fats can absolutely mess up your cells. And so there's also, you know, of course, smoking and heavy alcohol drinking as well and excess. And then there's the genetics uh, factor as well. Uh, and also there's epigenetics. So there's, the, which is actually what can affect our genes from the environmental, from our choices, from our stress levels. So there's ways that we can affect the expression of genes if we let it. So just because we have a gene doesn't mean it needs to express itself, but ways to uh, avoid that are through diet and lifestyle. And you know, some people can have a gene and it never expresses itself. Also underlying health conditions makes you more susceptible. Certain disease states and autoimmune conditions can make you more susceptible to compromised immune function. Right. Okay. So we kind of talked about this as well. You know, just looking at this is a, the, a U.S. food consumption uh, percentage of calories, and this really does show improves that point that we were talking about with that perimeter of the store versus the the center of the store, right? And people aren't consuming a lot of plant food. There's a lot more processed foods happening. You know, this is just a snapshot here. And when they talk animal foods, you know, they're talking about you know just the meat, the dairy, the eggs, the fish, the seafood. It's not bad it's just it's all about balance so we're seeing massive intakes of processed foods in excess eating or drinking too much sugar curbs immune cells right and this effect lasts longer so just just knowing that we have you know this as an issue as well just gives you that snapshot so maybe we want to shift this around a little bit so that we can have more of the green and less of the yellow really that's what that's about so some of the top habits that can absolutely affect you, uh, your, your health and your foundational health are, these are the top habits. So eat nutritional whole foods. This is a bit of a recap and even ask yourself, so what would a healthy person do? If you're given the choice, what would somebody who's super fit, healthy and strong do? Um, and so sleep seven to nine hours per day, drink 10 glasses of pure, clean water per day. And we actually have 10% of our world that does not have access to clean water. So if you're into doing a gratitude journal and being thankful for something, we should absolutely not take for granted that we have clean water that we can drink through our taps and maybe even we have a filtration system where maybe we're even drinking San Pellegrino. Like we've got water coming out the yin yang. We should definitely be drinking water. It's so important uh, when not the whole world has access to clean water. Move your body for 30 minutes per day. That's three to five days per week minimum. Get outside in nature, you know, get your eyes look up at that sunshine and get your eyeballs that get that sunshine in there so important to get out into nature it also has a grounding effect as well and then you know socialize I mean of course it's harder to socialize right now um, physically but we can absolutely socialize online we can arrange meetings there's things that we can do phone calls right and maybe you're gonna have you know a, like a driveway chat with a friend that's walking by that's great you know, make sure we still socialize, you know, even with the social distancing. And then of course, self-care and what that may mean to you. So this is not just about taking a bath or getting a massage or something like that. It's actually about caring about what, how you're speaking to yourself, being kind to yourself, you know, giving yourself time to give yourself boundaries for your environment. And then of course, it, mean, it means something different to everyone, but there's also that physical part as well. So that could include, you know, going to the doctor, you give, making doctor's appointments if you need them, right? It's not just about um, pampering yourself, but that's also very important. And probably more so now than ever to make sure that you still are looking after yourself. And then of course, take your vitamins, minerals, and baseline foundation products. These are super important um, to help shore you up. And this is where the convenience comes in. So you are the catalyst for any change to occur, right? Good health starts with you. When you level up your health, just think of all the other areas of your body that will be affected. So if you tell yourself, this is up to me, this is up to you, right? This is up to you. You know, you can do it, right? All these different areas. So vitality, your clarity goes up, you know, your stress levels, you're able to manage, you have stress resilience, you have vibrancy, immunity, positive moods, rest and recovery, all of these things, right? And remember to ask yourself, how can I ask yourself better questions? So we're going to introduce the core four for making you strong and healthy. Um, and it's all about you. So when you give to you, you have more you. We have, we're talking about getting back to you. So you can do more, feel more, experience more with your career, your friends, your family. You can show up mentally, physically, emotionally, and more. And so a lot of times we get this question of like, where do I start? I don't know really where to start. Well, if you can start with your gut, you're going to get go, give yourself 
go a long way from there. You are what you absorb. You know, this, this starts in your gut. You know, this is our terrain. It's critical to allow the body the best chance to absorb nutrients. You know, far too many, far too common for many adults to just be kind of suffering with haphazard, you know, ho-hum digestion, right? So our digestive system is a very powerful connector, connecting our outside world to our inside world. And so we want to make sure it's primed to protect us. You know, it's got functions, right? You know, our gut is everything from our mouth to our butt. So if we're having gas, burping, bloating, constipation, or diarrhea, we're going to have issues, right? Our gut helps us convert hormones even. It's got so many functions there, you know, outside of just absorption. It helps our immune system. It does a number of things, right? So A, stress and dietary choices all impact our digestion. So some of the same things that impact our immune system also impact our digestion. So poor gut health and digestion equals a weakened ability for our body to absorb and, and utilize important nutrients. So if we get into, into what, does it, what does it even look like? Well, most of our nutrients get absorbed in the small intestine. So here the villi and microvilli, the circular folds and intestinal glands work in unison to absorb nutrients into the bloodstream. So you can load your body up with supplements, but if your digestive tract is compromised, and I'll tell you about how easily you can, you know, it can be, then you'll be throwing away your money. Right, so full system working in, in harmony is what it's all about. And so we want to support the lining of the gut. And so various factors come into play that can damage various aspects of our digestive health and the integrity of the lining. So these work in uni unison, in harmony to protect its function. So this is really important uh, to understand. So it's some area to start. So, but why is digestion even important? So this is how we absorb our nutrients. Without good digestion, your body will not have the tools to support a healthy life. So poor digestion can result in low energy, low moods, achy joints, and body pain, right? So this is where we start to link things like leaky gut, right? We start to link in absorption of nutrients, maybe hormonal imbalance, maybe we're not sleeping very well. There's definitely a link between our gut and our brain, our gut and our skin, all kinds of things, inflammation. So this is where it goes beyond just what we might see, you know, in the toilet bowl kind of thing. So the term microbiome, so science shows us so much about the microbiome and how it affects us. You know, it's a huge part of us. You know, everyone's microbiome is unique. We're born with a set, but it's how, how do we keep that integrity of the microbiome? And the goal is with the microbiome is to have balance between the good guys and the bad guys to ensure healthy function of our immune system and more. So a lot more conversation around our gut health and our brain health, like I mentioned as well, but the term microbiome refers to the population of microbes in the intestine. So it's unique to each individual. There's thousands of microorganisms ranging from bacteria to viruses and fungi that have a big influence over our risk of disease and overall health. And these microbes are used by the body to create vitamins, process fiber into digestible fatty acids, and ensure normal function of the immune system. So these are our good bacteria, right? And so sometimes we get out of balance and we call this dysbiosis. Eubiosis is balance and dysbiosis is imbalance basically. So dysbiosis can generally be categorized into three types. So number one, loss of beneficial microbes. Number two, excessive growth of harmful microorganisms, which shift the balance. And number three, overall loss of overall mi microbial diversity, which is a population um, just that serves optimal health. And so those are the three categories. But these three categories are not mutually exclu exclusive. In most cases, they can occur simultaneously. So some of these things, you know, that may be affecting us that we're doing that can impact our digestion or our, 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 the, the balance of our good bacteria would be things like pharmaceutical antibiotic use, right? That's why we asked that question at the beginning, right? That can absolutely wipe out your good and your bad, right? Ingestion of antibiotics from conventionally raised livestock. Um, seasonal affective disorder, right? That, that's a sign as well. Not consuming enough prebiotics to feed the good bacteria, right? So maybe you're somebody who's on a special diet. Maybe you're taking a keto diet um, where you're not eating a lot of vegetables or fiber, right? So these are where you're going to find the prebiotics. So maybe you're taking a lot of NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, aspirin, Tylenol. Maybe you're taking a lot of these things as well, which, which can impact the lining of your gut. Drinking water has not been filtered that's not been filtered. So chlorine also will wipe out bacteria as well and kill off that beneficial bacteria in the gut. So since antibiotics are designed to inaliate bacteria, we know that they can influence dysbiosis, stress levels, right? Our weight, all kinds of things will impact that balance. 
So really, really important to understand that the foods that we're eating, you know, all these factors. So there's some pretty interesting research around the benefits on probiotics. You know, research shows that certain probiotic strains have been shown to support many important functions within the body, including improving digestion, uh, tempering inflammation, helping to control IBS and IBD symptoms, and also around supporting mood, behavior, and cognition. So some really interesting research here as well. And of course, these are not, um, it's not on specific strains. So, or it's a, it actually is on specific strains, sorry, and does not include all the probiotic strains, for example. And then also we find as well that there's research benefits for probiotics for stronger immunity. So probiotics uh, regulate and they host innate and adaptive immune responses by modulating the functions of the immune system like dendritic cells, macrophages, T and B lymphocytes. So these are all specialized cells that, that help to protect us basically. So probiotics help to regulate that response and kind of shore up uh, that army, right? And one of the mechanisms of probiotics regulating the immunomodulatory function is through the activation of these receptors from stimulating and promoting enhancing intestinal cells. So there, it goes back to those intestinal cells, right? So we've got an army that's ready to fight. Uh, we just need to make sure we're giving it what it needs. Um, so there's you know, a, lots of great connection here. And then several beneficial effects of probiotics on the host intestinal micro, um, mucosal defenses system have been identified. And these include blocking pathogenic bacterial effects by producing these special substances and competing with pathog pathogens and toxins uh, to adhere to the intestinal epithelium. So that's sort of how they work if you're interested in that little bit of science there, but maybe that's a little too much information. Um, and then uh, research also shows that probiotics support uh, the benefits for digestion. So probiotics help balance the gut microflora by several mechanisms such as competitive exclusion and releasing molecules that can kill or inhibit bad bacteria and also contributes to healthy digestive system that can optimally absorb and synthesize nutrients. So these points are, you know, really, really interesting to make in terms of that supporting of digestion. So we can see that probiotics are really, really important, but what about prebiotics? So prebiotics also serve as an important synergy in the gut as well. And we often think of prebiotics as foods for probiotics, but they can also act in different ways as well, including improved lining of the gut, improved mu mucin and improved permeability. So the metabolism of prebiotics by probiotics creates short chain fatty acids, which uh, they're called S SCFAs and have been identified as the link between the diet, the gut, gut microbiota, and energy metabolism. So ultimately a great factor in our overall gut health, you know, improving the diversity and population of microbiome. So there's a symbiotic relationship between probiotics and prebiotics. And so the action of prebiotics being more protective and functional. So they have a huge function in our overall gut by, um, microbiome and uh, the eubiosis that we're looking for as well. So really, really important, especially if you're someone who's on a limited diet, not eating a lot of fiber, not eating a lot of vegetables, uh, prebiotics play such a huge role and there's a lot of really great research around them as well. So step number one is around optimizing gut health, which is key for a, a healthy foundation, changing your eating habits. So step one includes include a probiotic and prebiotic supplement daily. And so we recommend, my favorite is the Perfect Probiotic by Pro Progressive. And so, and why are these so perfect? Why do we call them perfect? Not that we have to be perfect, but these actually happen to be, they're, they're awesome. Um, it's a combination of pre and probiotic. So there's various formulas depending on your needs. Um, so the great thing about this is that they contain both prebiotic and probiotic, other than our woman's formula. Um, and there's multiple probiotic strains in here to support your entire digestive system. So they're, they, depending on where you are, you know, we've got different levels uh, of, of different uh, strengths as well. Multiple probiotic strains, 100% human strain as well to better match your own gut flora. There's a unique delivery system as well, non-enteric coated delayed vegetable capsules to ensure the healthy bacteria arrive alive in your intestinal tract so they don't get killed by the uh, by your stomach acid, right? So they're going to arrive to that small intestine where they need to get 
to, and also number four, true ID certified to guarantee the presence of every probiotic species. Has anybody heard of true ID? It's actually a third party independent testing um, service that we have, and it's a third party done by the University of Guelph. And so it's all about knowing what is on your bottle is in your bottle through a DNA testing. We're the only company in Canada, well, there's, there's a, other than Jameson as well, who is using true ID. So it's, it's, we really value that transparency and integrity. And so knowing what you're putting in your body is important. It's sealed with trust. Our true ID certification is the mark of pure ingredients from pure sources. So when you see the true ID logo on progressive or Jameson products, you can be assured that every active ingredient has been third party tested by the University of Guelph for purity. So DNA testing traces and verifies the active plant species and probiotic strains right back to their specific living origins, thus certifying their authenticity and verifying their potency. So that is the true ID promise. That is what's on the label is actually what is in the bottle, nothing more and nothing less. So that's really important, especially as we move through, not everyone is using certification to verify that species. Uh, so I find that I get a lot of, um, I, I feel really confident knowing that as well. So just be sure to look for that symbol. Step number one, so again, just, just to rehash as well, um, just knowing that without a healthy digestive system, you'll not be able to receive the benefit of optimal nutrition. So that's what you're gonna get with the perfect probiotics. Um, there's a number of different formulas, including the 30 billion, the 60 billion, the 120, colon support, women's formula and kids formula as well. So then you will have more gut protection, more healthy digestion and stress-free eating. Okay, so let's get into step number two. So step number two is all about eating more super nutrients. We need diversity in our diet, right? So remember the challenges that we were seeing, you know, with people not eating enough vegetables and, and functional superfoods are really important for things like liver health, digestive health, and heart health, right? So uh, there's also natu they also help to naturally cleanse the body and also help aid in a strong immune system, right? So it ties to a healthy pH, right? When we have a, a pH that is optimized, alkaline versus acidic, we have better health. We have better immunity. You know, what, so what types of things push our body into a more acidic direction? Poor diet, processed foods, sugar, trans fats, things like that, right? And so these vegetables and functional foods help to balance that pH, also our energy and more. So it's amazing what happens when you start to put some awesome colors into your body. All right, so why functional foods in the first place? Well, I mean, researchers at Dalhousie University and the University of Guelph found that over 52% of consumers surveyed said they faced barriers in adopting the guide, so the Canada Food Guide, uh, they faced barriers in that in, um, the guide's recommendations. So problems include taste, preferences, lack of free time, dietary and cultural restrictions, and lack of availability in their area. So with so much of our country buried under snow for at least a quarter of the year, you know, access to fresh local produce is not always possible, right? So problems can occur too for people who are, would like to focus on local agriculture. There's also the harsh reality that fruits and vegetable prices are increasing faster than the prices of meats problems with digestion. So these are reasons why we need functional foods. Problems with conventional farming, right, too. So um, over farming, things like that. And then of course, the fast paced lifestyle, right? So we're rushing when we're eating. We're also not preparing the foods like we would because we're, we're constantly rushing. So we're choosing more frozen processed types of foods. So we need functional foods. <laughs> All right, so what are some of the research back benefits of natural botanicals and superfoods? These are some of my favorites. So spirulina, right, antioxidant, uh, there's, which is an awesome antioxidant. Uh, quercetin, right, another one as well. Uh, then we have things like Siberian ginseng, uh, which also has been shown by research to increase energy and improve the body's resilience to stress. Ginkgo biloba, which has been shown as well to increase alertness and feelings of improved energy. So there's uh, air, uh, air serola extract as well, which is an excellent source of vitamin C and B vitamins, both of which are used abundantly at times of stress. As mentioned, quercetin, antioxidant, but also an anti-inflammatory and energy booster. Uh, spirulina, an antioxidant, but also has high bioavailability source of vitamins and minerals. Beetroot as well. So research has shown that many, uh, to, to many that can be a vasodilator, which increases circulation and blood flow. People use this as well for working out um, to improve that uh, nitric oxide. So really cool, great benefits of these natural botanicals and superfoods as well. So good food does not have to 
to have take a lot of time, right? So you don't have to sit there in the kitchen for hours and hours on end. You know, think of this as, you know, leg number two. So leg number one is, is, is good gut health. You know, look, start with your gut. And then, you know, number two is um, over here, right? Where you're looking at, it doesn't have to take a long time. So it does not have to. So we love veggie greens. Veggie greens is absolutely awesome. It's all about upping the game of our green powders. It's got high ORAC as well. It blends 55 high ORAC vegetables and fruits from land and sea. It's rich in plant oils, herbs, and extracts. It contains phytonutrients that you don't get in your everyday vegetables. It's got one serving of veggie greens and is the antioxidant equivalent of six to eight servings of vegetables. Amazing, right? And you don't have to do anything. And the best part about it is it tastes delicious. It is so good. Oh my goodness. We've got different flavors. There's original. If you want to just add it to your smoothie, just as is. Pineapple coconut is my absolute favorite. Um, it also comes in blueberry medley, cucumber mint. It's absolutely awesome. So you can take your veggie greens, you can make it a habit to take one scoop of veggie greens uh, a day, right? And it takes only 20 seconds to do that, right? It doesn't take a lot of time. Uh, so it's a really great habit to add in and you're, you feel amazing. You just do. It's just like a little missing thing that you're, you know, a little habit that you can do to make yourself feel absolutely incredible. I dare you to try it. It, it is absolutely delicious. So those are the veggie greens, more antioxidants, um, more green power, lots of really great things around this. All right, so step number three, fuel your healthy mind and body with omega-3s. So that's what this is going to be about. This is going to bring you up over the top. So EFAs are a special type of good fat, right? They're also called essential nutrients, you know, sometimes called vitamin F. And so we're going to talk about what, what, why these are important as well. So if we talk about these here, so the EFAs are right here and they're essential fatty acids that are required by the body to establish and maintain overall health and well-being. So the human body is actually unable to synthesize them. So that means that we have to take them in. We have to take them in ourselves. So there's two main types of EFAs, omega-6 and omega-3. And the omega-6 fatty acid, the linoleic acid, LA, is naturally found in seeds and most plants, and this includes grains. And then there's omega-3 fatty acid, which is the alpha linolenic acid, ALA, which is found in cold water fish, the chloroplasts of green leafy vegetables, and in some raw nuts and seeds, such as flax, chia, almonds, and walnuts. Um, I will say that the conversion rate of the plant sources over the animals or the fish sources is a little bit harder. It's a little more tough, right, to be converting. We, our body doesn't do such a good job at converting, you know, from plant foods into EPA and DHA, uh, as an example. So that's why it's really important to consume uh, them via cold water fish if you can. So this is really interesting, this chart here, right? So DHA is, is naturally more abundant in specific cells. DHA is, is a fatty acid found that comes from fish, right? So this is, this is where our body is going to get. It comes from other sources too, and, and, but like I said, right, it's a little harder for our body to convert from other sources. So look at these sources here. You know, as we get it into the eye and the cerebral cortex and sperm, so we're looking at or eye health, we're looking at brain health, looking at red blood cells, spleen, and also reproductive health. So, so important, right? So if we don't have that DHA in the cells, then how strong are those cells gonna be, right? So look at all these clinical benefits of EPA and DHA, right? So if we look at this here, right, DHA is also particularly important for your brain. Up to 97% of your omega-3 fatty acids in your brain consists of DHA. So if you're looking for brain health, and we're not actually getting the raw materials that make it that give it its integrity, right? Then that's a, that's an interesting question. This is why DHA is so important for brain activity and thinking, and your learning and ability and reaction time, and many other neurological processes that affect your mental performance. DHA is also 93% of the omega-3s found in the retina of the eyes, too. It's also a key component of the heart. You ever get dry eyes? Right? Maybe it's a DHA deficiency. DHA is proven uh, is a proven essential to post and prenatal brain or brain development as well. So whereas EPA seems more influential on behavior and mood, both DHA and EPA generate neuroprotective metabolites in the double-blind randomized controlled trials. So lots of areas where we're going to have both EPA and DHA, triglyceride support, immune response, joint health, heart health. Right, and then like we mentioned with brain development, cognitive function, mood balancing, and eye health as well. 
really important. So this particular chart here, some interesting research from our scientific advisory board. Um, so we have uh, Dr. Holub, he's on our scientific advisory board. And so he ran this, um, this research experiment here and was just looking at, uh, looking at what, what, the, what we're currently taking versus what we're actually taking, looking at the nutrient gap and looking at those who have more risk of, of cardiovascular uh, disease and then, then just someone who's healthy. So the intakes are actually recommended to be higher for those who are in a disease state versus those who are healthy. But even so, the current intake, there's a big gap between what people are taking. So uh, it's, it's very, very interesting. So it's actually shamefully low. And so note that the recommended intake to reduce sudden cardiac death and all-cause mortality is higher, right, than individual. This is just the minimum per day, not per week. So if you go back to, you know, how much cold water fish are you eating, the question, you know, we have to ask ourselves is, are we getting enough EPA and DHA? So this really does highlight that gap of an area that we could all improve upon. So even, you know, looking at some of the fish that we might be eating, um, you know, mackerel, for example. So you'd have to eat a lot of fish, a lot of it, every single day, right? And this doesn't even really get into some of the things like the conversation around heavy metals and sustainably produced and all of that that people might care about, right? So it becomes challenging to get optimal amounts. So habit number three is fuel, fuel your healthy body and mind with omega-3s in supplemental form every single day. This will help to support cardiovascular health, assist with healthy mood balance, also for your hair, skin, and nails, right? And also research has also found that it helps support focus and mental acuity and also to help fight inflammation. I know for myself, I find a huge difference in my joint health when I take my omegas. Um, I absolutely love the orange flavor. It's like delicious. Um, and I also give it to my kids too. So, you know, get your omega-3s, right? Get them in every single day with one teaspoon or four soft gels. It's easy to take, you know, it's super convenient. And remember, it benefits your brain, heart, your eyes, and more. And each serving is 1,000 milligrams of EPA, 550 milligrams of DHA. So you're going to get that minimum that was recommended, right, in that two-to-one ratio. It also includes a family of support, right? It's super convenient. You know, the progressive omega high-potency fish oil is a foundation supplement. It's designed to be taken on a daily basis, and it has a long list of benefits, right? So, and we've got that dark bottle to prevent any damage from the sun. It's sealed to prevent oxygen getting in. And then there's other ingredients in here to preserve the integrity and the absorption and acidity of the ingredients too. Further uh, pres preservation with lemon, rosemary, grapeseed as well. We're IFOS certified, so international fish oil standards, five-star rated. And this really matters. This is all about testing another third-party organization out, out of uh, similar to TrueID, uh, where they're looking at the quality, safety, and potency. So five stars is the highest you can get, and we consistently get five-star rating. So here's, uh, here's some of the ingredients as well. All, looking at these cold water fish, but they're smaller fish, so um, they don't accumulate uh, the toxins as much. They're very clean, sustainably sourced, small body fish, right? There's the bioavailable forms of omega-3, EPA, and DHA. And then there's important cofactors that we mentioned as well, right? So the grapeseed oil, the lemon oil, um, and other factors here as well. So omega-3s, right? So more brain power, more potency, right? So this is this would be leg number three in our four-leg core four foundational health. Okay, so now are you getting enough proper micronutrients? So it's become harder and harder to get what we need despite our best efforts, especially as we age, stress, activity levels, nutrient depletion, and other factors, right? So this is, this is it. Are you getting the right micronutrients? Like it's so important. Are you getting them? Are you absorbing them? Are they actually in your foods that you're eating? Because if we're not, they could, this can give us an increased vulnerability to infection, low energy, decreased mobility, and memory loss, as well as poor wound healing, right? So meeting the diet and nutrition needs of older people is crucial for the maintenance of health, functional independence, and quality of life. So how do you know what you're getting? Well, you know what? Give yourself an insurance plan by supporting your whole body with the right micronutrients, right? There's lots of different reasons why we may or may not be, but you know, it's an easy enough thing to do. And this is key, even in an ideal world, right? So we know that there's factors that are, that are preventing us from getting what we may need. Um, so most Canadians, first of all, lead that healthy, hectic, hectic lifestyle, making convenient, you know, fast and processed food choices more often than quality food choices. 
Although we're surviving, it's unlikely that we're providing our bodies with optimal nutrition. So in an ideal world, we would all eat a wide variety of local, fresh, organic foods that provide the nutrients we require, but even in those cases, we're not always getting the nutrients because of soil depletion. So yet for many people, it's not even realistic to do that. So choosing the right supplements to complement our food makes absolute sense, right? I hope it does to you as well. Um, and for a variety of reasons, you know, we may not be getting adequate nutrients, right? So again, this comes from, from food alone. So food selection, recommended, you know, dietary allowance limitations. So we may think we're getting enough, right? So even just like, for example, vitamin D or, you know, whatever it, it may be, but we actually need a little bit more. So lifestyle factors as well. As well. And then bioavailability of nutrients. So maybe we're, get, we, we're eating a lot of the nutrient, but we're not actually absorbing it. It's not in a form that we can absorb it in. And then occasionally extreme deficiencies can result as well. So vitamin D levels of Canadians. So this is the one nutrient that many Canadians are not getting enough of. Just over two thirds of Canadians, 68% had blood concentrations of vitamin D over 50, a level that is sufficient for healthy bones for most people. About 32% of Canadians were below the cutoff. So that means that the majority of us you know, aren't really getting optimal levels. 20 to 39 year olds had the lowest rate below the cutoff. About 40% of Canadians were below the cutoff in winter compared with 25% in the summer. So the RDA for vitamin D for adults is 1,000 to 1,200 IU daily. And, but the tolerable research recognizes that the tolerable upper limit is 4,000 IU daily. You know, I know I re also recognize that certain practitioners will recommend higher intakes as well. So yes, we do recognize that. Um, vitamin D can modulate the innate adaptive immune responses by regulating immune function, inducing uh, antibacterial innate immune responses, suppressing anti-inflammatory T cell activity, and perhaps playing a role in regulating antibody production. Deficiency in vitamin D is associated with increased autoimmunity as well as an increased exception susceptibility to infection. So the implications of vitamin D on the immune system have become clearer and clearer in the recent years. In the context of vitamin D deficiency, there appears to be an increased susceptibility to infection uh, in a genetically susceptible host to autoimmunity as well. So very, very interesting uh, research here on vitamin D. Uh, another reason to take more vitamin D, right? Um, and so it's, it's what you absorb that matters. It does come back to this as well. You know, it's also important to remember the impact of the digestive system on one's ability to absorb and then use the nutrients that we eat in the diet. I mean, yes, our, when it comes to vitamin D, our skin is supposed to help us with that, but we don't always have full exposure. We need to actually have full back exposure, right? So we're not always walking around with, you know, with that happening to get that vitamin D production, even in North America. So it's important that we, you know, think about digestion, absorption, our skin health, all kinds of things to help with that. So it's so important that we start with digestion. So remember, take that probiotic and prebiotic supplement. Um, and so step number four, support your body with the right micronutrients, make it a habit to take a good multivitamin and mineral. So, you know, the, the progressive has a great variety as well. You know, there's a foundation of supplements designed to be taken on a daily basis basis for supporting optimal health. Taking a daily multivitamin that helps maintain immune function, energy production, healthy bones, hair, skin, nails, and overall health. So Progressive has actually 10 formulas. So this is about personalization, whether you have an active lifestyle, you know, whether you, you're, just, you, you're, you're not as active, whether you, you just wanna have a regular multivitamin, you've got children, you know, age, gender, there's women, men, there's all kinds of different formulas as well that have a combination of green food, uh, vegetable concentrates, botanicals, and other key nutrients that meet to different nutritional needs depending on where you are. So for example, this is the adult men and adult women. This is a comprehensive nutritional support for your modern lifestyle. Great for immune support, vision and skin, also energy production. It also comes in chewable format too. So if you wanna have a different way or you don't wanna swallow pills, although this, the, pill, the, the capsules aren't very large, um, you can get the capsules as well. And also coming in the great forms, different forms of, of the, the vitamins as well for optimal absorption as well. So bioavailability is really high. 
Then we have the active men and, and uh, adult women. So this is exceptional support to improve energy, accelerate recovery, and combat stress. So there is a little bit of an increase in here if you happen to be active. So this also supports immune support, muscle function, and energy production. So you're going to get kind of the, the, the key ingredients that were found in this one, but you're going to get just a little bit more in the active. So the progressive active formula contains higher potencies of the key nutrients responsible for supporting a more active lifestyle. Then we have the men and women 50 plus. Uh, this is the multi where you're going to have high doses of key nutrients for outstanding support over the age of 50, right? So this gives you that immune support, the healthy vision and bones, and also the energy production as well. So that's where we get, you know, the challenges in this around this, this, this age group are the reduced need for calories, but increased need for nutrients, right? So this is like the tea and toast generation, right? Where we're not necessarily always getting, not necessarily at 50, but, you know, as we, we get older, right? And there's reduced stomach acid impacting B12, calcium and iron and magnesium uh, absorption, reduced hunger mechanism and thirst mechanism, and then the social impact that influences emotional health and appetite. So keeping that in mind as well as we, as we uh, get older. Uh, and then so more than just vitamins and minerals. So there's extra antioxidants, although some vitamins such as vitamin C and E are known antioxidants or other uh, vitamin uh, antioxidants with their own properties. So these include antioxidants such as bioflavonoids, coenzyme Q10, L-glutathione, which makes progressive multis more complete supplement for the immune system and overall health. And then there's isolate and botanical ingredients. So isolated nutrients provide a high potency of vitamins and minerals that you need in the smallest possible capsule. Botanical compounds add the holistic benefit of the complete plant, right? The botanical ingredients vary between our different formulas as they've been chosen for their age, gender, and lifestyle specific nutrients. And then there's greens in here as well. So the majority of Canadians do not eat enough vegetables. So the addition of greens is of a great benefit, alfalfa, chlorella and kelp are included in each of the formulas, right? And then remember that vitamin D, we've got progressive has vitamin D. You may need a little bit extra as well, right? So it's important for the whole family. We've got kids sunshine burst, and then there's vitamin D caps as well. Again, this has helped to maintain a normal immune function. And again, also helping to develop the maintenance of bones and teeth. We've got spray too. Uh, so if you're looking for a different format, right, this is a great flavor. It's easy to take. Again, no pill fatigue, really high absorption. And this is great for people with intestinal distress or malabsorption issues. So get the right micronutrients in their body. More personalization so you can have more great moments, so you can have more healthy days, right? Because this is about you, you know, how you show up what you put into your body matters. You know, you want to be able to show up so that you can be that mom, be, be, that, be that boss, be that leader, be that person, be that sister, be that brother, be that person that you want to be, that you say you want to be. And it all is affected by the things that you put into your body, right? So what you put into your body does matter. This is all things that we can influence, working within our circle of influence. These are all choices that we can make. It starts with a healthy foundation, right? To, re to recap, shore up your digestive terrain with perfect probiotics, eat more vegetables, and take additional super antioxidants and veggie greens, take omega essentials for a healthy mind and body, arm up with progressive personalized multi vitamin D and added vitamin, uh, with, with added vitamin D as well, so you can have all the legs of the table up, right? So it starts with a healthy foundation. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Um, I, I'm so happy that I could be here tonight with all of you. I'm just looking at the time here. I want to leave some time for a few questions. I see there's a few Q&A here. Um, so I want to thank all of you for taking the time to come on this webinar today uh, and all of you to take care and stay healthy. I'm going to go through some of these questions here. So um, 